A first thing to get out of the way, of course, Man United lost 3-1 to Leicester. Three bloody one. Um, not a surprising result considering our form and considering just the approach that we, you know, uh, we have when it comes to games such as this. But a little bit of a confusing one if you just analyse it a bit deeper. So overall, in terms of the balance of the game, I think Leicester were fair and justified winners. I think they approached the game in a systemic, in a systematic way that brought the best out of their players, even with the injuries and even with the hectic schedule that we all have. Even they don't have European football, this we're still all playing games between what three every three to five days for the most part so everyone's got a stack schedule the whole idea behind fatigue is you know uh neither here or there for me at this stage of the season that's what i would say anyway um but we started the game pretty well i thought for the first 10 minutes we looked quite lively you know running after the ball chasing pressing not you know in any kind of organized way but still it was there um, Pogba looked really good within the first 10-15 minutes I even mentioned on a couple of places when I was talking about the game oh, Pogba looks amazing you can see the difference that he brings to the team but obviously he's still working himself up to full fitness so by the time it came to around 30 minutes he basically had died he'd exhausted all his kind of energy um, which obviously was a shame because we felt like you know if he would have stayed on the pitch and we would have maybe, maybe moved some other players around we probably still would have had a chance to win the game but alas that didn't transpire even though that being said, we did concede a goal out from a mistake. We weren't really getting stretched that much, I feel like, in the first half. There were some instances where Leicester were trying to get in behind us, but we were defending pretty well for that time. But then, obviously, we decided to let them have a pretty easy goal, which resulted in Maguire sort of passing it to Fred, which he should have, shouldn't have done. I still think the main responsibility lies with Fred. If you're a midfielder and you're asking for the ball in that position, would you send it back? Because I'm, I'm old school. I want my centre backs to defend. I want my centre backs to kick the ball into Rosed, to clatter into the opposing strikers within their area. I want defenders to first and foremost defend. This whole ball playing centre back stuff only applies to certain defenders and only applies to certain teams who can afford the luxury to do so. I think more often than not, if teams concentrate having the defenders actually defend, then over time you can maybe supplement one or two with you know a midfielder here and there if you have an injury or maybe you can get ball playing one to maybe supplement the ball winning ones uh ball playing but yeah but you know what i mean but i think overall if you have better defenders playing it will definitely do you the good long term especially with united especially with the like ollie who doesn't necessarily seem to have like a way of playing for the most part it's all a bit of a mishmash it'd probably be best set just having good defenders so with that, if you have good defenders, they should be giving the ball to the midfielder to carry it further up the pitch. So if Fred is asking for the ball, even if the position he asked for it was crazy, even if he didn't check his shoulders, he wasn't aware of who was behind him, he didn't know how much time he had on the ball, whatever, all those mistakes that he did make, the, the, the error is still on him. He should be in a position where he could either take the ball away from that position of, you know, of concern or win a foul. Those are the two options. Now, of course, you could then say Maguire is a leader. He should be more responsible and not passing the ball because he has a better pitch of the pitch. He's basically looking, you know, out onto all the players. Whereas, you know, uh, Fred is sort of back his face towards everybody else that's behind him. Fair enough. But so far, we've seen with Maguire, he's not really that kind of defender. He's not really that kind of captain. He's not really that sort of like leader that will push people around, tell them where to be, um, remind players of their responsibilities. That's not really what he does, which is concerning considering he's a captain and he's a centre back, right? You'd imagine if usually if they give um, the captain's armband to a centre back, a top team like United, right? You'd imagine that person is usually the one that's sort of like cajoling everybody. He's sort of like the second coach on the team, right? Um, he's the one. He's sorry, he's, a, he's an unfilled manager. You'd imagine he's a bit more, you know, of an organizer. He pets people up to keep a chin up if we can see the goal, all that kind of good stuff. But for the most part, Maguire looks like the kind of defender who sort of leads by example, which is cool, but it's not maybe a captain material. So for people to expect him to like have the wherewithal to tell Fred, no, your man on, duh, 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 that's unlikely. But again, doesn't matter. Um, the ball gets you know popped away from him. I think it goes to Vardy, and then he get he plays in in, in, in a natural. Easy goal, goal goes around Dean Henderson, slots it in 1 0. 
Then we have a good period of, of possession, not really going anywhere. And then our first bit of attack, where we sort of combine some passes in and around the box, we get it out into midfield, we're straight into their area. Um, we then score a goal with Mason Greenwood and a perfect dummy by Van der Beek, who probably didn't have the best of halves himself, but he still played a pretty de decent dummy, considering everyone thought he was going to shoot. He let the ball run between his legs, and Greenwood comes in behind him and smashes it in 1 1. And at that point, you feel like, okay, even though let's have the momentum, we clearly have the better players individually on the pitch, I still think. Maybe outside of defenders, I think one, you know, there weren't a lot of lesser players that you would swap for hours, right? It's a kind of a rubbish example, but that's what people would say, you know, when it comes to these kind of things. Then, of course, second half starts and we just completely capitulate. We just don't really show up. We don't really turn the screws on and turn up in any sort of way. Yuri Tillman scores a pretty good goal, but again, way too easy to get through us. Um, a 1-2 that's played, I don't know, 40 to 50 yards outside of our area. And from then he carries the ball about 20 yards and then smashes it into the bottom corner. Really easy goal. And then, of course, um, Kelechi Inacho towards the end again scores to make it 3-1. And by that time, the game is over. Um, Solskjaer decides to make four subs all at once around, I think, the 60th minute or something like that. It might have been. Let me see if I got it. The stats here show on the screen. I think it's at like the 60th minute. Like, everyone came on at once. I'm going to say 60th. What time was it? It doesn't say here, does it? No. But it was around the 60th minute, I'm going to say. Like, loads of people came on at the same time. That didn't really change much either. And again, it was just a complete... I think there is. It was 73. No, here we go. Yeah, so about four subs all at once, right? There we go. Four substitutions all at once. Absolutely nutty. And it didn't really affect the game, to be honest. Cavani came on. Luke Shaw. Scott McTominay. Bruno Fernandes. A sort of like like-for-like like substitution after we went 3-1 um, three, three down. Um, sorry, two one down. Sorry, so he kind of responded the first time we sort of really seeing Sasha respond that way. Now, assessment wise, going forward, the the concern, of course, always with this United team under Oli is that so far it doesn't seem like we have a way of playing that can get us results outside of hitting teams on the counter. That's the only weapon we have in our arsenal, and the possession play that we do kind of have isn't necessarily systematic. It doesn't feel like we've practiced any positions, any combinations. We don't really score what you'd say outside of our counter-attacking goal. Can you really tell me of a trademark Manchester United goal under Ole Gunnar Solskjaer? It's not really set pieces. Maybe it's a penalty. Um, maybe it's a free kick. But there's not really anything in open play that you can say that, oh, this is how we sort of identified ourselves. We don't really have those sort of like, you know, typical uh, of Liverpool goals, typical, you know, even Chelsea are scoring typical goals for them at that moment, right? Everything happens sort of in the box. Uh, Man City, of course, have that typical goal that they score where they pull the ball back into the penalty area and somebody always, you know, penalty spot, someone always kind of starts it in, usually Sterling, maybe Gabriel Jesus. There's always those type of goals that happen or flash across the goal. We don't really have that. So if that's the case... And if people who are fans of Oli are saying, hey, he needs better players, unfortunately, we're owned by the Glazers. And the Glazers so far have proved that they're only willing to invest to a certain point in this team. And if that's the case, then it's really unlikely that we're going to sign all our targets. People here, you know, people, some fans think we're going to sign Sancho, we're going to sign Highland, we're going to sign a centre-back. And we're going to sign, a, I don't know, whatever else we've meant to, we, we need in our team, right? Because I still believe we probably still need a right wing, a centre back, um, a right back for competition for Aaron Wambasaka, a defensive midfielder that can actually start, right? Coming straight into a team and sort of command that DM role so you don't have to play two defensive midfielders in that position. And then, of course, a right wing, a right wing forward and a centre forward. So that's probably five players there that we need, right? Maybe you could say four, you can maybe con condense the centre back and the DM role. Maybe if you want, get someone versatile that can play two of those positions maybe like a Declan Rice sort of esque of a profile player but overall we need five of those players right and if we're being linked with the Harlands and the Sanchos that's already what 200 million easy for those two players that's not going to happen and then you know you still have to buy three more so this idea that we're going to sign all our targets is ridiculous unless we obviously lower the requirements but I still don't think I, the co concerning thing for me is that we still had pretty much a fully a full strength side, I would say, right? I would say Martial is probably still number one striker. Greenwood probably still number one in terms of right wing forward. Um, maybe Van der Beek is not the option on the left. Maybe someone like Bruno or whatever else. But generally, in terms of our overall lineup, 
that was a pretty full strength side, right? If you tell me to look at it, Paul Pogba, Martial, Greenwood, Van der Beek, Maktich, Fred, maybe you could change a couple of players. Defenders are out of the four. Maybe only Tellers is the, is the one that's maybe different. But overall, it's not that different to what we play week in, week out. So for the team to completely capitulate and not have any idea how to play football makes me concerned about what we do in training. Like, what are we practicing? What is Ole Gunnar Solskjaer doing in terms of coaching these players to get the best out of them? Because we can, if we will agree that we're the second best team in the league because of the league table doesn't lie, then why is it when we face these other teams that aren't next to us or aren't near us in the table, does this all, you know, are basically below us in the table, let's say, why is it suddenly now it becomes the fault of maybe the players and not the manager? If the manager is responsible for getting us a second, why then suddenly in these t- typical games, we can't follow him anymore? And that's the issue that I have. So if we do want to go forward with this Ole Gunnar Solskjaer experiment, he's going to need a blank checkbook. He's going to need the ability to sign whoever he wants to sign. And that isn't going to happen. He's going to have to play under some level of constraints. And if he doesn't get top four football, or if he doesn't, um, you know, we've basically proven over the years with the Glazers, if we get top four football, they usually withdraw the funds more because they feel as if they can get away with it. And if we don't get it, then they spent more. So he's in a win-lose position. And if anything, Solskjaer probably needs the FA Cup or the Europa League more than we do. We probably need to win the league to cement our kind of return back to the big time or to maybe push Man City within a few points, let's say, during one title season, right? That's what we probably need. We don't really need a Europa Cup, Europa League. We won that already with Mourinho. We probably need to be in the Champions League with a season in, season out, actually competing, um, qualifying from our group, getting into the knockout stage. That's what we actually do need as, as a team. But Solskjaer, as a manager, he probably needs a trophy more than we do. So why would he go into this sort of game with a lineup that you wouldn't say is a full strength lineup, maybe first teamers. And then when it doesn't go right, he doesn't necessarily have a plan to f- correct the issues. Now, it's not all these four. The players that played obviously didn't really make that much of a song and dance out of themselves. You could say Mason Greenwood didn't play too well. Martial didn't play too well. Van der Beek obviously was a bit hot and cold. Matt Titch was moving like a fridge. Fred obviously was, you know, making loads of unforced errors. Tellez was good going forward, but probably not the best at defending. Maguire and Lindelof, you know the deal with them too. Aaron Wan-Bissaka, the same thing goes for him. Dean Hansen, probably the only one that can have you some, something good to say. But again, that's a lot of players that had an off day all at once. Usually that points to errors within the preparation of our team. The reason why we always start games so slow, the reason why we don't tend to kind of take initiative and sort of like, you know, um, play the game, kind of impose our will on the other team. The, 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 the fact that we have to go behind in order to see a response, all these sort of things are kind of making you think if it isn't, if it's happening so often, especially at this level, at this stage, when trophies are on the line, right, in the, you know, we were, if we would have won, we would have maybe faced Southampton in the next round, which would maybe a favourable draw for us. It really does go to show either the mentality of the players isn't where it needs to be, or the coach isn't doing what he should be doing with the players he has available. Because quite clearly, by the league position, we are the second best club in the country, allegedly, right, based on the uh, individuals that we have. So if that's the case, we should be going to Leicester with maybe a couple of our first teamers, quote unquote, out of the team and still winning. And the fact that we didn't, in my opinion, just shows that quite clearly, maybe only long-term isn't the guy. He'd done a good job, a great job, an amazing job post-Mourinho. Breath of fresh air, right? He really lifted the mood, a dark cloud that existed over Carrington during Mourinho's stay. Horrendous. I think Tottenham fans are sort of feeling the brunt of that now at the moment. Mourinho's not the same guy that he was in the past, right? He's probably passed it as a coach, maybe a bit of him, maybe embittered, whatever it is. The attitude that he does bring to teams now isn't invigorating. It doesn't inspire confidence. He calls people out when he's not winning and then when they do win, he takes all the credit. Just a really cancerous sort of influence that you have in your team. Great guy to come in post Mourinho as Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. All happy, all smiles, happy to have the job, happy to be of service, you know, um, selfless maybe to a fault. Loads of good stuff, but overall, in terms of long term, the fact that he never sort of complains about the team, he's happy with his players, he says, he's great with the board, he's not really going to ruffle any feathers. So if we are doing as Paulie was doing now, you can't then go and blame the players and say you need more signings because you said you were happy with what you have. And you've signed quite a few of these players. This is looking like more of a... This, this is looking more like a Soul Shark team than it is any other team that has come there forth. Do you know what I mean? He's got rid of the players or the players who have left are the ones that he didn't want to keep. 
So there is no excuse now going forward. There has to be trophies. And I think when your manager's coming out and saying stuff like, oh, trophies aren't important, it doesn't really inspire that much confidence going forward, does it? Um, again, I still think we'll finish top four. We've probably got our only chance of winning trophies now is Europa League. So that's going to be difficult, you know, facing Granada in the second round. In the next round, sorry, knockout stages, I'm not really sure why everyone's so confident we're going to beat them. I think we've seen so far when Man United face teams that are great in terms of keeping the ball in possession, we usually suffer. I don't think they're going to allow us to hit them on the counter time and time, time and time again. That's how we're definitely going to score. So if that's the case, it's going to be a cagey game. It's not going to be easy. Um, if we're going to take them, for, if we take, we should take them. We take them for granted at our peril. Um, but again, that's the only chance for a trophy that he has, which is, in my opinion, significantly harder to win than the FA Cup. I'd imagine. Um, especially when you consider the teams that you're facing, the fact that you haven't seen them play too often, um, you know, the travelling, all that sort of stuff. So it's just, it just didn't make any sense in it going forward. But hey, you know, maybe there is a grander plan that I'm not aware of that we're going to be aware of maybe sooner rather than later. Who 